My name is Julie King, and I'm here today representing three different uh, venues. So we have CanadaOne.com, National Small Business Magazine. We also publish a hyper-local website, Stovall Connects, which connects us to the local N6 community and uh, helps businesses there. And we run BizZone. BizZone's an internet company. So I'm going to frame things today from the small business perspective. And I'm going to talk to you not just about a personal experience. I'm going to talk to you about my experience helping Canada's businesses. I'm going to talk to you about Stovall's businesses. And I'm going to frame this in a sense, actually, of loss. So this is a quote from Daniel Kahneman. What you see is all there is. And it's a really important quote because the experiences that we have create the possibilities we can explore. And when I was asked to talk about ultra high speed as opposed to just high speed, I thought, you know, isn't high speed good enough for most small businesses? And I think that the innovation that's been threaded throughout this conference ties directly into this quote here. Because if we want to have innovative communities, we need our businesses to be able to see and to experience the full technology, not the hobbled horse, or else they're not going to be able to see, explore, innovate, and have those eureka moments. So here's a quote. We're going to go back in time to 1977. I was seven years old. My father built our first computer in our living room. So being a little kid, my first impression of computers you have to be really quiet because dad gets mad if you talk when he's building the computer. It had a magnetic tape deck to run the data. And this is a quote from Ken Olson, who was the founder of uh, Digital Equipment Corp. There's no reason for any individual to have a computer in his home. Let's fast forward to 2006, an important year for me personally because it's when I was starting my first business, Envision Multimedia. I was going to make CD-ROMs for kids. At the time, we had a Pentium 166, which was the rage, and four times CD-ROMs were the technology we would use to create multimedia. I couldn't do my business. I got it all done, I had my scripts done, everything was ready to go. But I couldn't get enough video and enough high quality video that I needed onto the CD-ROMs of the day. And so I pivoted. So uh, at that time, 23% of Canadians were on the internet and 7% accessed it from home. I'd been online since 1991, and uh, there's been a lot of changes. Right now, we're undergoing the mobile change, and I don't think I need to beat this one. It's a really messy process, though, because of the bandwidth variations. I can go many places, some rural places, and get on Foursquare and get r business reviews. I will not go to a business anymore unless I can check you out before I consider eating at your restaurant. And yet, when I go to downtown Newmarket and try to get onto Foursquare, cannot connect to internet. So, you know, in 1996, yeah, I couldn't get my videos on CD-ROMs, but at least everybody at that time had that same limitation. It's not like some businesses had these super fast, super big CD-ROMs and others had small ones. So today, with the changing availability of bandwidth, it's a real risk. Let me tell you some of my own personal experiences with video. We're doing some video at the conference today. I love video. I love online video. But quite often, it doesn't work. I was partnered with a direct engagement uh, webcast show, and we had Mike Slabby come up from uh, Chicago. Mike Slabby was the CTO of Obama's election campaign. He headed up the social media that got Obama elected. So kind of high profile. Globe and Mail had it on their homepage promoting this event. Webcast starts. Nothing. 15 minutes later, I'm scrambling to try to help them out. It ended up being a reboot fixed it. But for 15 minutes, you're dead in the water because no one after 15 minutes is going to tune in. So bandwidth prevented a very high profile, very, what could have been a very successful webcast from taking place. And then I had the great idea in Stouffville to uh, televise one of the federal debates uh, for the election campaign. And uh, we showed up and we did all of our testing because there was no Wi-Fi. We were going to run it off our cell phones. Everything worked beautifully. Day of the event, big thunderstorms. Guess what? The internet doesn't work quite as well on cell phones when you have a big thunderstorm. We got one really poor audio stream out and people were emailing and saying, what's going on? We can't see this. So again, bandwidth prevented innovation. And not only that, but those experiences teach the community something negative. They teach the community that the technology can't be relied on, and those things are hard to recover from. So we had these 700 megabyte videos we were trying to push up of the politicians. 
It took two and a half days of dedicated effort to get four videos on the web. Because at that time, YouTube at least has gotten a little bit better. But at that time, YouTube, you could get your video 92% up, and then it could fail. And guess what? Right back to ground zero. You have to start over again. So you know, businesses, what do they do? At this point, you pivot. And so what have we pivoted? Well, we're still doing video. We're still trying the technology, but we've backed off it significantly. If, on the other hand, we had a 100 megabit second connection, we, what would we be doing? What would our vision be? Well, I tell you what we'd do. We'd go on Google+, Plus. we'd make a circle, we'd invite everybody we knew to join a circle, and start having collaborative video-based peer groups around all of Canada where people could come on around interesting topics and share knowledge and ideas. Why aren't we doing that? Bandwidth. Something else you can do that's quite new with Google+, and these Hangouts, is we can actually broadcast to the world. So I could have done my interview with uh, Sherwood this morning, and I could have done it on a Google+, Hangout, and invited anybody in the world to watch that video broadcast without me spending any money or doing any complex technology setup. The only limitation and reason I wouldn't try it right now? Bandwidth. So I put this together. It's kind of fun. Um, two fictional business owners. Small, let's talk about the small business owner, not the technology business owner now. If you can uh, hit the video, we have no guys to hit the video. <laughs> there we go. So we've got Zoe and Mike, and this is a very real type of experience. Zoe is a connected entrepreneur. She's running a little catering business off of her iPad. Mike, on the other hand, has the experience that I have far too often. He's waiting. His screen is turning and turning and nothing's happening, while Zoe has used Shoebox to take fo uh, photos of her invoices, ship them off to the company that records them. It now goes into an automatic free bookkeeping system, so that gives her time to write press releases, focus on marketing. Most importantly, Zoe's focused on customer service. Because in the technology time that she saves, she's able to run her business better and more efficiently. While Mike, Mike just waited and gave up. So Zoe's conclusion was this experience led her to use technology to grow her business. And Mike, his business is going to suffer because he's not going to be able to leverage it. So going forward, the winners are going to be businesses that can move and store large amounts of data. Let's take a look at some numbers to understand what this means. In the 70s and 80s and 90s, we talked about kil kilobytes and megabytes. Now we're talking about gigabytes and terabytes. But the next wave that's coming are petabytes, exabytes, and zettabytes. Originally, we had a 1.44 megabyte floppy. Ooh, then we got the 650 to 900 uh, megabyte CD-ROM. The USB sticks now are going up to 64 gigs. And typically, we'll have like an external hard drive, one terabyte. What does that mean when you go to use the technology and upload some of this data? Well, with a DSL connection, one of the videos I produced today, I could upload it in just under three hours. So that means my entire workflow is based around what time of day that upload is not going to interfere with my staff. And it's really hard because that means that at the end of the workday, I queue up videos to upload. And you hope that everything goes well and that they're actually there for you the next day. With ultra fast, two minutes. Reality, the other day we had to get some videos up, cell phone. So we did it in under 30 minutes, seven videos on a cell phone. And uh, the need for ultra-fast bandwidth is really quite simple. Um, as the data gets bigger, we're going to need to move it. And what we're talking about now is not uh, terabytes, but going to be petabytes. In two to five years, we're going to have petabyte hard drives on the market. And that's 1,000 terabytes. And zettabytes, right now, global internet tra traffic is 21 exabytes, which is 1,000 petabytes. One petabyte is the Avatar movie C uh, CGI effects. And uh, two exabytes per month is the expected global usage of mobile data, mobile bandwidth. And 18 uh, exabytes a month is what Cisco's network forecast is for the amount of internet video that's going to be generated next year. So um, what does that mean? Well, one CD-ROM, what we thought was a big deal in 1996, you would have to stack them six feet tall and need 1,500 of them to get to one terabyte. You would have to do three, just under 3 million CN towers or go to Winnipeg, from Toronto to Winnipeg, to get an exabyte. And if you go to the annual uh, amount of 667 exabytes, you go to the moon, the earth, and back to the moon again. That's a lot of data. And so what does it mean for small businesses? Well, Europe's done research. 
especially small businesses, need to be able to move their data. They don't have big, expensive, homegrown or internal networks. Uh, last month, a report out of the US found that the entrepreneurs starting a business could save $16,550 with high-speed broadband internet. And uh, I won't get into this slide, I won't have time, but uh, they are now tracking on Wall Street. Five microseconds makes a difference between being successful as a trader or not. And they're hollowing out buildings in New York City to get closer to where the actual wires come into the city to get the fastest possible internet. Every way we do business is going to be affected by the internet technology and is going to be affected by what kind of broadband we have. And ultra-fast broadband is going to be a huge differentiator. So, but most importantly, what you see, that's all there is. And so if we want our businesses to see opportunities and, and understand how they can leverage opportunities, especially in the York region and our N6 communities, if we want to become the communities where people want to be located, we have to give them access to data and bandwidth transfers that is going to let them see all of the opportunities. After all, where would you look if you were going to start or relocating a business 2013, 14, 15? The foundation of the cities of our country were based on access to resources. At that time, it was things like water, transportation, good agricultural land. But in a technology urban-based society, the definition of resources is going to shift. And the key fundamental building block of the resources of businesses of the future is going to be ultra-fast, high-speed bandwidth. Thank you. Thank you.